According to the executives canvassed in this survey, UK manufacturing faces a very positive 2022. To pull some statistics from the report, 73% believe conditions for the sector will improve this year. 73% also believe the opportunities for their business outweigh any risks they face. And 63% of companies feel the UK to be a competitive location for manufacturing. Here to discuss these findings with me are Stephen Phipson, Chief Executive of Make UK, and Kara Haffey, PwC Partner for Manufacturing and Automotive. Stephen, given what we know to be the headwinds, the considerable headwinds in the economy, inflation, supply chain difficulties and labour shortages, are you at all surprised by this optimism? Nick, I'm not. You know, the manufacturing sector in the UK is a very resilient sector. We've been through difficult times before. Obviously, last year was very challenging for many, many sectors in the manufacturing area. But they are seeing this year a really good balance of optimism coming through here. And particularly in, you know, trying to deal with some of the big issues that have been learning experiences through the pandemic, like resilience in the supply chain and and some really good information coming through here on the executive survey around trying to mitigate some of those skill shortages through investments in automation and looking at onshoring, for example, as a way of trying to mitigate some of those supply chain risks. So people can see their way through some of the challenges that were presented last year and it's giving them some some degree of optimism, I think, that's coming through in this report. Carol, what stands out for you from this survey? I think for me it was the the positivity. So I like to hope I'm quite a positive person. So I did get a kind of real a real buzz from seeing how positive... Um, manufacturers in the country were and I think for me it was also the um, optimism around what people feel they can do on climate change and everything that's sort of built from COP26 so again I was really pleased to see that coming out and something that all, all the executives are focused on um, so that for me was the couple of highlights. Uh, it's interesting isn't it I think that uh, people assume that because there can be these headwinds, these negative impacts on the economy. The fact is that, that uh, business people react and they, they're, they're agile, they adapt. Um, and I suspect that's exactly what's going on. As you say, Stephen, people really are finding new ways to, uh, to deal with a lot of these issues. And, and part of the confidence, I mean, obviously, we've seen quite some serious challenges, Nick, around material costs increase and freight costs increase and those sorts of issues. You know, in some areas, looking at between 20 and 30 percent increases in the last quarter in our sort of overview of the economics of the manufacturing sector. We have seen manufacturers able to pass some of those cost increases on now and we're seeing recoveries in margin. And again, that's giving them more confidence for this year going into this year, saying that some of those issues can be offset. Of course, some sectors have got some really heavy challenges, particularly around energy costs coming towards them, if you're an energy intensive user. But broadly speaking, people have been able to pass some of those costs on, which also does mean that inflation for the wider economy is pretty much baked in, if we start looking at that. Um, But in terms of manufacturers themselves, that gives them some cause for optimism. Likewise, on things like skill shortages, we're starting to see people now invest in more automation, thinking of upskilling their workforces as a big focus on retention and, and investing in their people. And again, it's a reaction to the lessons they learned through the pandemic, Nick. Yeah, Cara, I wonder about investment because COP26, as you already mentioned, uh, lays out quite a a challenging roadmap for uh, the manufacturing sector. What do you think is happening in the sector as as a result of that? Are are people responding and beginning to to invest in the technologies they need to reach net zero by 2050? I think we're definitely seeing um, a lot of that. So I think, you know, people have been talking about this issue for a number of years, but we're definitely seeing action. Um, And I think, you know, we look at um, the investment needed to kind of really change the energy that that our manufacturers use. And I think that is definitely something that um, executives are prioritizing. And I think for for what Stephen said, the whole piece around skills, um, when we launched the Green Jobs Barometer recently, you know, it's actually fascinating by region, but also in our own industry around the skills needed to understand what um, a manufacturer needs to do and then really try and implement that. 
But, you know, I, I take a lot of positivity from the fact that, you know, our clients and our manufacturers have been through a roller coaster of a couple of years. But actually, in the main, they've all really coped with it. So there's a level of confidence and of resilience. It might be a bit tiring at times, but I think people think, right, actually, I've got through this. You know, let's go. What's the next um, what's the next piece? And I think people see um, the outcomes and what they heard through COP26 is a big part of that. There's also a massive market opportunity for them. So actually the market opportunity for bringing green product to to the market is something that I think our manufacturers are seeing. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say that uh, speaking to uh, several of my contacts, I know that the the ones who are most positive about 2022 are the ones who are getting ahead of the game, and uh, they're, they're they're getting ahead of that uh, investment game into and, and and benefiting enormously from it. So it's it's not a burden; it's an opportunity. Um, Stephen, I know we keep banging this drum, but looking ahead to 2022, what do you want from Her Majesty's government? Well, we need to build on this optimism, Nick, is what we need to do. We need to uh, really look at capitalising. I mean, there's some very strong indications coming through here about how to build resilience in the supply chain, for example, onshoring some of those offshore supply chains. I mean, it'd be quite good to see incentives for doing that from the government around their policy decisions about how to encourage companies to, to onshore, to bring those things back to the UK so that we can build a stronger and more resilient manufacturing sector. So, again, I'll bang the drum again about industrial policy and industrial strategy, uh, but the plan for growth really does need to reflect some of those incentives that makes those companies really really interested in bringing those things back to the UK, Nick. That's going to be really important. And the other point, of course, is skills. Skills is always there in the background, always one of the biggest issues. We are seeing coming through here quite strongly the desire to invest more in skills, to do more. We're seeing, I think, 45% of companies now looking at taking on apprentices for the year, which is very welcome. But again, we need to see more ambition from the government in supporting those vocational skills programmes in this country so that we can build those skills bases up. I think that's going to be absolutely essential. Cara, what will you be saying to your friends and clients in the, in the manufacturing industrial sector as we, as we enter 2022? Um, I think for me, it's around understanding where their focus is, um, understanding how we can help um, really guide them from what we've understood, particularly on the energy um, and also in um, costs. You know, I, I think as long as people have got that focus on what is their supply chain, they've really understood it over the last couple of years, some more than they wanted to through Brexit and others. But actually, there's a real understanding now and actually making sure that's as resilient and agile as possible. Um, and also really looking at exporting. So we've seen some good signs there about how people have coped with the last couple of years and really pushing on. And I think for me, it's around, as you said earlier, actually making sure that our friends and clients are as far ahead of the curve and not just waiting for things to happen to them. I think it's a busy time for people. People always sort of think, right, actually, January, I've got you know all my thoughts around what my strategy is for this year. But getting ahead of some of these issues um, is really, really important. And digitalization still comes up, Nick. You know, actually, are we focused enough on the, um, you know, what our businesses want to look like in four years time, three years time, you know, actually making sure that we're continuing to look ahead rather than just deal with things on a month by month basis, which I know is easier said than done. I look at my own to do list and think that's well. So um, I think that's something that we just need to keep keep people focused on in such a positive and, and confidence um, position. Well, Cara, thank you. You, you. you mentioned the B word there, Stephen. I'm wondering if, um, if Brexit still factors into the way manufacturers are looking ahead to 2022, particularly as we've got these new regulations on declarations of incoming goods from the EU. Is this going to be something of a, an, an extra shackle around the legs of manufacturing? Well, you know, as we as we've seen again coming through in these uh, survey results, the the current um, trade and cooperation agreement with the EU does present challenges for manufacturers. There's no doubt about it. And as we go through time, we're starting to see, as you say, the new import um, uh, requirements coming in now. We've got the CECA marking. We've got UK reach. We've got a number of a number of other things to go through yet. And many people see that on a, as a drag on growth with the business with the EU, which, of course, is the largest export market for the sector. Um, and even though we're positive here, we probably see another 10 percent decline in activity with the EU this year as a result of many of these additional requirements that are put in place. But that's offset against optimism, as, as uh, Cara said, on the other export markets, which we can address. So we've got many manufacturers concentrating more on their domestic market, 
but a lot of people thinking the US is a very good place. They're seeing growth in the US export market. And then, of course, opportunities throughout Asia and the Middle East, which are coming through quite strongly as well. Um, so attention is being turned to the export um, mitigation of the EU challenges. But there is no hiding the fact that it's still very challenging for manufacturers to be exporting their products to the EU. Nick, and we, you know, we, we, we continue to urge government to improve the existing trade and cooperation agreement to make that easier as we go forward. Well, optimism tends to breed optimism, and uh, let us hope that uh, that manufacturers generally start to, to to get this spark and and turn it into a fantastic 2022. Stephen Phipps and Kara Haffey, thank you very much indeed for being with us, and uh, this has been a special report from Manufacturing TV. Thank you very much indeed for watching.